We'll go ahead and call the commissioner's meeting of March 24th to order. Could everyone please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Well, welcome back to uh, in-person commissioner's meetings. By way of announcements, um, okay. yeah. <laughs> um, the meeting is being recorded, and uh, we will be starting our in-person uh, commissioner meetings again. And uh, for the work sessions, we're still going to try to do them. We will do them in the conference room, uh, but if you are interested in joining via GoToMeeting or something, just contact us in advance, and we'll set up a go to meeting so that you can still uh, hear what's going on, or you can call into the conference room, whichever. Um, we will be trying our best to accommodate people who want to join remotely, but also think it's time uh, to be meeting in person again. Uh, since the last board meeting, um, we have not had any official executive sessions. There have been several informational meetings, however. Uh, they are as follows. Um, on the 19th, uh, we discussed food security. Um, that is Trisha, Commissioner Durbin and I did. Uh, on the 22nd, we had a meeting with the warden regarding staffing needs, and we also discussed broadband uh, through the IDA. On the 24th day, we met with Judge Skirta regarding some uh, concerns about state funding for the AOPC. Did I miss anything? Okay. Um, then on to public comments. Uh, at this time, uh, Brian Swanson called ahead and asked to be on the agenda for public comment, so I will turn the floor over to him for the... Uh, it's Bruce Swanson. I'm sorry. It's all right. Uh, I was just wondering what plans you had to maintain the bike path, especially from the, where it starts at East Street up to State Street in New York and uh, North Warren. That's really all I have. Not to put you on the spot, Dan. Uh, yeah, well, that's okay. <laughs> I can uh, I'm, I'm Dan Blotz. I'm the county planning director, and we've had a role in, in the installation of the bike trail from uh, beginning to its uh, current endpoint. Last fall, the maintenance director and I uh, traveled the length of the trail, identifying the areas where we need some attention. Uh, there's a rippling uh, effect from some roofs, I think about halfway down that section you were referring to. There are a couple of locations where it looks like it's going to be undermined with some washouts near um, the edge of the trail. So uh, winter set in then and we're now getting into the time of year where we can start um, bidding out those tasks that need to be done. We'll have to have somebody come in and mill out that ripple effect section so we can lay down a new piece of asphalt there. And then we'll be trucking in um, the uh, crushed bank uh, gravel to fill in those areas where it has eroded up very close to the trail. So we're aware of where the, the, uh, the problem is just um, Mother Nature wasn't too cooperative last fall, but we will be getting to it. We have the funding in place to do that. That's Act 13 funds? Yes. Very good. And you would expect it to be done by the end of summer? I'm hoping to get it done this spring if we can. Very good. So we're, if we're at the mercy of the schedule, it'll be asphalt um, companies. Right. Sure. Very good. And I also want to thank you for plowing that this winter. There isn't a whole lot to do here in the winter time. And, uh, I'm retired, and I see a lot of people using that trail. It's there's, there's always been a question of should we plow it or should we not plow it? Some people want to use it for cross country skiing, so you don't plow right. it. Others are, are using it as their main form of transportation to get back and forth uh, to Warren. So we've elected to, to plow it, and, and right. so far it's, it's been working out fine. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Is there any other public comment at this time? Very good. On the agenda today, we have. Um, the comprehensive plan uh, agreement, and Dan Blotz will be giving a, uh, a moderate-sized presentation <laughs> on uh, the importance of that. Um, we would ask for adoption of the quality management system, uh, an addendum to the country manner management agreement, 
KSI, uh, which is our employee assistance program agreements. Um, we're going to be tabling the North and East Street waterline extension project uh, due to needed additional review, and that's the uh, bids that we opened at the Monday work session, and then an agreement with the Economic Opportunity Council to administrate the rent assistance program. Uh, did I miss anything that's supposed to be on the agenda? That's not. Okay. Uh, then on the minutes uh, for March 10th, we had both the public hearing that day as well as the public meeting. Uh, you had a chance to review them. Approval. Very good. Finance report, Riley. In the general fund, we have $4,226,048.38. Payroll for three twenty seven dollars was 386404 dollars Accounts payable of $230,000. Leaving the balance at $3,784,749.18. Okay. And the general fund's balance is so high because of the ERAP money? Yes. Very good. Everything looks good. Any questions? All right. Proclamations. There are seven of them today. Uh, we'll start with National Library Week, read by Commissioner Eggleston. Hello. This is. Uh, Proclamation for National Library Week. So whereas Pennsylvania libraries have long served as trusted and treasured institutions and library workers and librarians fuel efforts to better their communities, campuses, and schools, uh, Warren County librarians are organizers and information experts who for over a century have guided people to the best information resources. Librarians provide the expertise, services, and guidance for patrons to access credible sources and information, making their own informed decisions about the worlds they navigate. Warren County libraries and librarians offer more than books, offering opportunities for community engagement and delivering new services that more closely connect communities and their needs. Warren County libraries and librarians open a world of possibilities through introductions to STEM programs, workforce development, life planning seminars, and instilling a sense of the power of reading and lifelong education. Warren County libraries support democracy and affect social change through their commitment to providing equitable access to information and access to technologies for all library users regardless of race, ethnicity, creed, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, or socioeconomic status. Pennsylvania Library Association's PA Forward Initiative provides a collective voice for libraries throughout the Commonwealth to tell their stories and build capacity for the work they do with and for patrons. Uh, Warren County librarians work to serve all community members, including people of color, immigrants, people with disabilities, and the most vulnerable in our communities, offering services and educational resources that transform communities open minds and promote inclusion and diversity, particularly as society continues to transition to the digital landscape. Pennsylvania libraries, librarians, Pennsylvania workers, and supporters across America are celebrating National Library Week, which is celebrating its 63rd year in 2021. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Warren County Commissioners proclaim National Library Week April 4th through 10th of 2021 Residents are encouraged to visit their local libraries this week and beyond, exploring all the libraries have to offer. Remember, literacy is power. Libraries provide the fuel to move Pennsylvania forward. And, um, you know, Warren County is very fortunate to have some of the nicest libraries that, that I've seen. And uh, the staff that work with them do a marvelous job. And I'm, I'm very happy with the level of support that the county has provided them over the years, and I think that they're a fantastic resource. Um, I would also add that after we sign this, let me know because we want to put it in a folder and make sure that I um, take it to the library. Because um, I know Kelly, uh, the executive director, would like to probably get a picture of it. Very good. Any other comments? Other comments? Okay. Thank you. Uh, next is National Telecommunicator Week. Whereas emergencies can occur any time that require police, fire, and emergency medical services, and whereas when an emergency occurs, the prompt response of police officers, firefighters, and emergency medical responders is critical to the protection of life and preservation of property, 
And whereas the safety of our police officers and firefighters is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who telephone the Warren County Communication Center, and whereas the public safety telecommunicator is the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services, and whereas the public safety telecommunicator is the single vital link for our police officers and firefighters by monitoring their activities by radio, providing them information and ensuring their safety. And whereas the public safety telecommunicator of Warren County Communications has contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, suppression of fire, and treatment of patients. And whereas each dispatcher has exhibited compassion, understanding, and professionalism during the performance of their job in this past year, and therefore be resolved that the County of Warren, Pennsylvania, declares the week of April 11th through the 17th to 2021 to the National Telecommunicator, to be National Telecommunicator Week in Warren County in honor of the men and women whose diligence and professionalism keep our country, county, and citizens safe. And that will be today. I know Kim, of course, and the Director of Public Safety wanted to be here. Um, and he was hoping to get here in time, but he was uh, responsible for uh, overseeing the, um, the first day of the, uh, uh, the vaccination clinic. So he was not able to make it, but uh, personally knowing all of the dispatchers, um, I can say that every word of that is true. They really do. They really are one of the most professional uh, crews uh, in the region when it comes to um, uh, telecommunications, and uh, they've had some very trying times, uh, not only this last year, but uh, you know even the last week, where the I think there was like 12 active fire calls at the same time the other day. Uh, just incredible. So very proud of them all for stepping up and um, um, in what can sometimes seem like an understaffed uh, department. Anything else? Very good. Second chance month. Sure, sure. Uh -huh. So second chance month, uh, April 2021. Uh, whereas in the land of a free, a criminal record should not necessarily mean a lifetime disqualification from the opportunity to build a better life after a mistake for oneself and one's family. And an estimated 70 million Americans have a criminal record, with 49,280 individuals incarcerated and 41,305 individuals are on probation and parole in Pennsylvania. And individuals with a criminal history often struggle to find housing, employment, or education, regain voting rights, volunteer in their community, and pay for significant debt that arises as a result of their conviction and incarceration. And the Council of State Governments reports that the number of legal collateral consequences of a criminal conviction exceeds 44,000, with 850 consequences specific to Pennsylvania. And whereas these barriers can contribute to recidivism, which increases victimization and decreases public safety. And the stigma and legal barriers associated with a criminal record results in lost human capital and lost economic output for the United States. And Pennsylvania is leading the nation with a steady advancement of bipartisan criminal justice reforms focused on removing barriers that prevent advancement in the workforce, creating the nation's first clean slate law, creating a chance hiring policy for state government, and eliminating driver's license suspensions for non-driving infractions, all while seeing consecutive annual decreases in our prison population and a drop in crime. Therefore, we, the Commissioners of Warren County, do hereby proclaim April 2021 a Second Chance Month. This designation contributes to increased public awareness about the need for closure for those who have paid their debt and opportunities for individuals, employers, congregations, and communities to extend second chances. We're adopting this the 24th day of March 2021. I'm very pleased to see since the last time this proclamation was read uh, some major reforms on the federal uh, level. Um, it's amazing to think that uh, in Pennsylvania alone there are as many people incarcerated as there are residents of Warren County. Um, next, Autism Awareness Month. Mr. Eggleston. Autism Awareness Month, April 2021. Uh, whereas autism can affect anyone regardless of race, religion, socioeconomic status, or geography, and the prevalence of autism in the United States is one in 68 children. And autism affects more than 3 million people in the United States and more than 55,000 children and adults with autism are receiving services in the Commonwealth. And children and adults with autism are family members, friends, neighbors, and coworkers. And each individual with autism is unique with talents and qualities such as exceptional focus and dedication. And individuals with autism benefit from specialized services and community support to ensure 
their health and safety and full participation in community life, such as Forest Warren Human Services Early Intervention and Intellectual Disabilities Programs. Individuals with autism, families, uh, professionals, and community members are supported through connections with others and the sharing of resources. And the resilience of families and individuals with autism is strength strengthened through support. And we value what is important to people with autism and their families who are striving to live everyday lives. And positive outcomes increase for individuals with autism when training is provided to professionals across all systems, including those in justice, healthcare, and emergency response settings. And the AMS for Autism Awareness Month are to inform the general public about both the potential and needs of with both the potential and needs of people with autism and to stress the importance of early diagnosis and early intervention, as well as the importance of providing appropriate support for continue, uh, that continue through adulthood. Therefore, in recognition of Pennsylvania's diagnosed with autism and their families, we, the Board of Warren County Commissioners, do hereby proclaim April 2021 as Autism Awareness Month. Uh, we encourage all Pennsylvanians to provide their support and furthering awareness about autism. Um, and, you know, this is the my annual undertaking of reading this proclamation, uh, partially because my um, I have two children with autism, so obviously Autism Awareness Month is kind of important to me. Um, and I would just say that uh, as a part of this, you know, to re recognize people with autism, to think about the the stigmas related to disabilities and to be mindful of that. Uh, also to thank folks that work in the industry in order to address persons with disabilities and autism. I think that they do an incredible job. Um, having two children with autism, we receive services from all of the different providers in the county. They do amazing work. They've made a big difference in my family's life and, and, and so I'm very grateful to them. Um, I refer to myself as I'm not just a commissioner, I'm also a client, <laughs> uh, to, to, to make kind of a joke about it. Um, just um, very grateful for the support of the community and, and for the support of the county and its continued commitment to kind of addressing the issues of disabilities and autism. Thank you. Next, Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is a progressive disorder of the central nervous system affecting more than 1.5 million people in the United States. The American Parkinson's Disease Association has sought to ease the burden, find a cure through research, patient family services, education, and sponsorship of 45 chapters, 55 information referral centers, and more than 1,000 support groups throughout the United States. And the world, the nation, and the County of Warren observe Parkinson's Disease Awareness Month during April 2021. And the County of Warren recognizes the efforts of Warren Parkinson's Disease Support Group to raise funds and promote awareness to fight Parkinson's disease, thereby improving the quality of life for those living with the disease. Now, therefore, we the commissioners of Warren County, in honor of those who work with the American Parkinson's Disease Association, Inc., and their value to our residents, do hereby proclaim April 2021 to be Parkinson's Disease Awareness Month in the County of Warren. Stop that this 24th day of March, 2021. Next, Child Abuse Aware Prevention Month. Whereas child abuse is a community problem and finding solutions depends on involvement among people throughout the community, Approximately 42,252 reports of child abuse and 178,124 reports of child neglect were investigated in Pennsylvania for 2019. In Warren County, 159 reports of child abuse and 651 reports of child neglect were investigated in 2019. The effects of child abuse are felt by whole communities and need to be addressed by the entire community. Effective child abuse prevention programs succeed because of partnerships created among social service agencies, schools, religious and civic organizations, law enforcement agencies, and the business community. Pinwheels for prevention will be placed in the courthouse yard as a symbol for child abuse and neglect prevention. Pinwheels representing the 253 births in Warren County in 2020 will be placed on the courthouse lawn. These serve as a reminder for our community to take an active role in preventing child abuse and neglect. Further, we commend the Children and Youth Advisory Committee, CASA of Warren and 
Forest Counties and the Warren County Child Children's Advocacy Center for providing such information to our people and urge full support of their successful effort in concert with the local community agencies, public and private, to establish a community-wide network of education and treatment where abusing parents and children are at last finding new hope and effective support. Now, therefore, the commissioners of Warren County do hereby proclaim April as Child Abuse Prevention Month in Warren County and, all, and call upon all citizens, community agencies, religious organizations, medical facilities, and businesses to increase their participation in our efforts to prevent child abuse, thereby strengthening the communities in which we live. I believe the um, uh, placing of the pinwheels, if anyone's interested in joining us, is on the 1st from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock. Comments? Sexual Assault Awareness Month is intended to draw attention to the fact that sexual violence is widespread and impacts the Warren County with a safe place providing sexual assault support services to 96 men, women, and children in 2018. And whereas healthy sexuality means having the knowledge and power to express sexuality in ways that enrich our lives, it's about every person being able to make consensual, respectful, and informed choices. There is no room for pressure, violence, or control. And a safe place has placed uh, child sexual abuse prevention a priority in providing over 30 programs to 2,145 students in Warren County in 2018 to confront the reality that one in six boys and one in four girls will experience a sexual assault before the age 18. And we must work together to educate our community about sexual violence prevention, supporting survivors, and speaking out against harmful attitudes and actions. And with leadership, dedication, and encouragement, there is evidence that we can be successful in preventing sexual violence in Warren County through increased education, awareness, and community involvement. And whereas a safe place strongly supports the efforts of national, state, and local partners, and of every citizen to actively engage in public and private efforts to prevent sexual violence. It's time for all of us to start conversations, take appropriate action, and support one another to create a safer environment for all who live and work in our community. Now, therefore, be it resolved, be Warren County Commissioners join advocates and communities across the country in playing an active role to prevent sexual violence. Along with the United States government and the state of Pennsylvania, we do hereby proclaim April as Sexual Assault Awareness Month. And uh, this is obviously a proclamation that we would prefer um, didn't need to exist, but, um, but it does. It's a very serious issue and very grateful to uh, a safe place, uh, the folks in law enforcement, uh, human services, everybody that is involved in addressing this as an issue. And I just want to uh, state that we support them in their effort to address this. More comments? All right, then at this time I would ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda. I will make the motion to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. There's no old business on the uh, agenda today. First up on new business is an agreement with Mackin Engineering, but in advance of that, I would like to ask Dan Gloss, the Director of Planning, to come give us an update on a very important document that we are actively working to approve. So go ahead and just indicate to me when you want to okay. slide next. Okay. Right now it's searching. Uh -oh. <laughs> hey, can anybody hear me okay? Okay. okay. I'm just going to stand off the side here so I'm not blocking the uh, screen. What I wanted to talk to you about is give you a little bit of an overview of uh, what the comprehensive plan update process is all about. Uh, if we could go to that, yes, thank you, Ben. Uh, this is the uh, current comp plan that we have in place right now. It was completed back in August of 2005. We did do another one prior to that in 1992, and now we're uh, on the road for, to uh, complete our next comprehensive plan. It's, it's been more than 10 years. If you go to the next slide. The uh, Pennsylvania Municipalized Planning Code, or Act 247, is kind of the Bible, if you will, 
for all things land use and, and planning. And in this document, there's a piece that addresses the roles of the county planning commissions and the comprehensive plan. And, and uh, this document here directs county planning commissions to uh, review and update the comprehensive plans for the counties. They prefer on a 10-year increment, but um, with the uh, financial situations, the way they were with the grant program, we weren't able to get started on the, uh, the update in uh, 2015 like we had preferred. Uh, so instead, what we're doing is looking at now, we were able to successfully secure some funding from the Department of Community and Economic Development. Uh, and the process is going to involve the um, uh, utilizing the County Planning Department staff. And it's going to take us approximately a year or so to get through this entire process. And we'll be doing this with the assistance of a, a consultant firm, Mackin Engineers and Consultants is who we have selected. We went through a uh, RFP process. There were four um, consultant firms that expressed an interest in, in, the, uh, in uh, doing the plan for us or with us. Uh, when it came all down to it, uh, Mackin had the uh, best proposal for us. We want to mention that they're the ones that are also completing the recreation plan, so it seems to are in good consistency with the same consulting firm doing both of those plans. Uh, this is a, an idea, the, the scope of work that is part of this whole process. There are five components to it, one of them being the community snapshot, then the visioning and needs assessment, the implementation plan, public uh, engagement and promotion, and then finally the plan adoption. Now, what I want to do is take each one of these uh, piece by piece and just run through what is all involved in, in those. As far as the snapshot goes, uh, we have current documents that are in place right now that are of importance, and uh, we want to review those current plans, studies, and ordinances, and then identify those recommendations and plans that actually haven't been carried out yet. So we want to kind of carry those, those uh, projects through as if, if it warrants uh, necessity to do so. Uh, the next thing we'll do is utilize the Department of Community and Economic Development's workbook uh, called Creating an Implementable Comprehensive Plan. What we want to do is make this a project-driven plan this time around as opposed to a set of data uh, dealing with each of the, uh, the components of the plan. So this is going to be more of a, these are things that we have identified that we want to do and, and, and want to carry it out rather than a broad brush of the entire community. Uh, we're going to take a look at some existing trends and conditions that are currently in place here now in the county and then um, gather uh, demographic and socioeconomic data as part of the, the comp plan process. Uh, these, are the, these are the pieces of a plan that the municipalized planning code wants counties to address and those include existing land use. Uh, we have the, the, the county that has a zoning ordinance, but it only applies to 13 of the 27 municipalities. City of Warren has its own ordinance. Youngsville Borough has its own ordinance. And the rest of the municipalities are unzoned. But what we want to try to do, based on um, where the services are available, utilities and so forth, identify those uh, future growth areas as part of the uh, existing land use. Transportation network that we currently have in place, housing, and we have to cover the gamut on housing whether it be from uh, pro providing for places for mobile homes to housing for uh, the, uh, folks with certain needs and uh, apartments and all of those kinds of things. Community facilities would be things like um, schools, the schools, the hospital, or medical facilities, uh, libraries, and, those, and things of that nature. Utilities, obviously, like with gas, also we want to take a look at where water service is available, sewer service, uh, and communications and so forth. Uh, recreation, I touched on that a bit earlier. We'll just roll that plan right into this one when we get to that piece of, of the document. And then natural and historic resources are another component that the state requires us to look at as well. So, move on to the visioning and the needs assessment. Uh, we will create a vision uh, that will be developed and, and uh, revisited throughout the duration of the uh, planning process. And we want to use that to ensure that the input that we receive is reflected uh, against that particular vision. It will prioritize the recommendations and strategies uh, that we developed during the, uh, the project. And um, 
identify the assets and issues that, and needs that the county is facing today and going forward five, ten years from now. Uh, we'll also uh, pen a community development objective or sets of goals uh, that will be drafted as part of the plan to address each of the issues that uh, are identified and then that will serve as the guidance for the decision makers in the county, whether it be the commissioners or other agencies and organizations that would take lead roles in carrying out the different projects. The uh, implementation piece of it, uh, we want to make this plan a, a, a implementable one, one that um, uh, we can actually carry out the projects rather than it being something like a pipe dream, if you will. When we look at plans that were done back a number of years ago, they were, they were created with a pie in the sky kind of mindset, if you will, and unrealistic. We want to make sure that this is an implementable plan, that these projects are, are absolutely doable. Uh, so there will be a number of strategies that uh, we'll, we'll develop as part of this. Uh, I'm going to move over here. I'm having a tough time seeing some of that smaller print. Uh, with the responsible partners, who or what agency is going to be responsible for uh, carrying out the different um, pieces of the, of the plan itself? Who could be potential partners along the way? Uh, the identifying the costs of what each particular project would, uh, would most likely cost in carrying it out, and what are some of the funding sources that could help with that, and, and then also the, uh, the time frame. Uh, how long will it take to accomplish this particular uh, task or, or project? Uh, there'll be a series of benchmarks that will be uh, identified as well, three to five of those during the uh, plan uh, process for each of the pieces of it. Uh, then we go into the public engagement and promotion. This will be a, a, a project that relies heavily on the input of the public. First step we'll do is identify a steering committee made up of key individuals throughout the county. Uh, planning commissioners will be members of it. I'm uh, hopeful that we'll have a county commissioner on, along with um, economic development agencies and school district and so forth. We will utilize the county's website as a way of getting the information out to the public along with social media and, of course, the, uh, the press. Uh, surveys will be available online, it can be done electronically, and uh, we'll also have printed copies of the survey available so people can have easy access to get the information of things that are near and dear to them back to us. We'll be holding a series of stakeholder group interviews. Uh, up to 25 of those uh, different organizations or groups that have an interest in pieces of the plan. Focus groups will also be established, and then we've got the public meetings. There'll be um, two public meetings that will be, uh, that will be carried out, along with uh, utilizing some existing events to kind of spread the word about what this whole comp plan uh, process is all about. The adoption phase, uh, We'll be in constant uh, conversation with the county commissioners as this plan develops. Uh, the county planning commission, when we get to the final uh, final draft of the uh, of the plan, will then uh, make uh, make a recommendation that it be adopted by the county commissioners at a commissioner meeting. Uh, the municipal planning code requires that we send copies of the plan to our neighboring counties and the municipalities within Warren County themselves for review and comment. There will be a 45-day public comment period and uh, another public hearing held. The commissioners, once they're all set with it, will adopt the plan by resolution. Keep in mind this is not an ordinance with teeth, it is a plan, so the plan itself is adopted by resolution as opposed to an ordinance. And then we would, um, by reference, include other documents that we've done in the past, like the Pennsylvania Wilds Design Guide, the Recreation Plan that we're currently wrapping up, the county has just completed this hazard mitigation plan. It's in the hands of the folks at uh, FEMA right now for review and comment. Once that plan is adopted by the county, then it would be incorporated into the comp plan by reference. And the stormwater management plan that the county had developed back a few years ago and any other pertinent plans that should be included. So then, our deliverables. Uh, the draft plan will have obviously an electronic format so that we can post it on the website. And then we also have printed copies available for review. Final plan, same thing, electronic on the uh, website. 
and other locations as uh, deemed necessary along with the printed copies. And then there will be a executive summary that is put together by the consultant firm. So I think that's the last uh, slide there, Ben. So that's what the plan process is all about. Like I said, it's going to take us about a year to work through this. If anybody has any questions about it, I'm happy to uh, answer those. No? So I just add that I'm uh, super excited to get this under underway. I know it's something that we've talked about for a few years and that you know, um, it's so needed, especially with some of the larger projects that we want to try to accomplish in order to seek federal and state funding yeah. and really requires us to bake it into the comprehensive plan. And so I look forward to working on the steering committees and, and just getting, you know, baking all of the stuff that we've been working on the past few years into it. So you raise an important point. What we're hearing now from the funding agencies, whether it be DCNR, DCED, whomever, um, if you don't have your particular project identified in the plan, the agency is thinking there's no public support for it, so therefore they're not going to consider it for funding. So that's why it's so important for us to identify those projects that are near and dear to us and get them into that plan itself. Another thing I'm, I'm hopeful to accomplish with it would be to set key performance indicators for the county overall. And as part of our government management system, which I'll talk about in a second, we're setting them for the county government. But obviously when we're looking at a comprehensive plan for the entire county, <coughs> we're asking over you know, the 20, 2005 plan, you know, where we've improved. I have no metrics, I don't really know. Mm -hmm. um, and by the way, your point was very well taken. I think it's the 1964 uh, plan for the county. I looked to put thumb through and it has like interstates running everywhere. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you ought to see what they came up with for the Kinsey Dam. I did. It was an incredible pipe dream, but just that. <laughs> uh, all right, so thank you so much. I think that's you know, a really critically important uh, thing to update the community about. I've gotten several questions about it just in the last couple of months or really even the last couple of weeks um, from people in the community that are wondering where, where, where we're going, and this is going to answer that. And, and we wanted to start on this a while ago, but there was a funding issue at first, and then I wanted to get through the recreation plan before we started on this so I didn't have a consultant going two different directions. Very good. So we have before us a contract for professional services with Mackin Engineering Company between them and Warren County in order to do the plan. So the county would compensate the consulting firm uh, for actual hours worked and actual reimbursable expenses not to exceed 55,125, which again 90% 90 is, 90 is being covered by the EAP yes. grant. Yes. Any questions? Not that I have a motion to approve said agreement. I'll make a motion to approve the Mackin consulting agreement for an amount not to exceed $55,125. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? Just say that um, I've, I've, I've worked with the um, recreation plan with Mac and, and, I, and the plan that they produced for that, um, which is in draft form, it was very good. So I, I think that this is a very good uh, group to be working with. And I look I think it's going to be a good, um, they're going to do a lot of good work in the county. They were highly recommended by some of our neighboring counties. Yep. Nothing more. Uh, all those in favor of the motion to approve Mackin Engineering uh, proposal, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Next, resolution 3177 adopts the uh, Warren County Government Management System, which I just briefly made reference to. Um, so, I will be doing a more broad uh, presentation, probably a work session um, in the near future, but uh, I didn't want to put too much on today's agenda given time constraints, but I wanted to kick off this project. We've talked about it somewhat in the um, work sessions previously. Uh, what we've created here is modeled off of a uh, ISO 9001 standard, which many businesses in Warren County use uh, to document their policies, procedures, work instructions, and so forth. Last year, uh, the ISO organization came up with 18091, which is essentially 
taking the logic of uh, the business community, kind of nine thousand one, and applying it to local government. So, for instance, it takes words such as customer and replaces it with uh, taxpayer or something like that. Um, so, it's really fundamentally bringing the uh, uh, the best of what uh, is in manufacturing and bringing it to local government. And uh, so, the quality management system. Or or government management system, as I'd like to call it, is a collection of those business processes focused on consistently uh, producing the same service um, to our constituents. Along with that uh, uh, would be the manual, which is kind of the governing document um, for the entire system, which has been drafted by our consultants and uh, had input from the commissioners, and um, that's ready for approval. In addition, there are eight initial procedures that need to go in hand in hand with the manual in order to make it work. And that would be, first of all, writing policies and procedures, revising those policies and procedures, document control, internal auditing, corrective and preventative action, nonconformance, um, management review, and data analysis. Having reviewed those, I believe they're ready to pass. This would be the first of many things to be passed uh, in future commissioner meetings. But this gives us, once we solidify this much, it really gives us the groundwork to begin building uh, the policies and procedures. Really the only ones that we've passed so far last year had to do with uh, elections, and that was due to a timeliness uh, issue. But um, this will give us the naming convention, um, the format that all of the policies and procedures should follow, uh, references to uh, statutes, uh, whether federal, state, or even local uh, past ordinances that pertain to why we do what we do, and of course the documented process of how we do it. So um, all of the departments that are within the commissioner's purview uh, would be subject to uh, the ones the, writing their own policies and procedures, uh, but I expect that to be a one or two year process to be honest. We are going to prioritize if we move forward with implementing this more. Um, the HR, fiscal, and elections departments for various reasons. Um, but uh, anticipate ramping it out to the other uh, departments under the commissioners as well. The other thing that would go under this would be the policies that apply to all county employees. Uh, so if you think of the employee manual, which is yay tech currently, uh, but seriously outdated, each of those policies would be updated and passed in such a way that if they need to be edited in the future, they could be independently approved by the commissioners rather than uh, having to do a comprehensive rewrite of the employee manual every time. Uh, so I think that's the beauty of the system, and um, it's, it's kind of my number one project for this year to work on, and I'm very pleased with the project so far, across the, uh, the, uh, where we're at so far. So with that, I would ask for a motion to approve resolution 3177, which approves the manual as drafted and those eight procedures that I listed. I'll make a motion to approve resolution 3177. I'll second. Motion made and second in discussion. Hearing none. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Now the next um, order of business is uh, a addendum to previous proposal, um, which I at the time thought I might have a conflict of interest with, so I uh, stepped out, uh, if you would, of the electronic meeting. Uh, now there's definitely a conflict of interest with country manor management, so uh, I have a direct relative that is now subcontracting for them. Uh, so once again, for this addendum, I will be recusing myself and stepping out of the room and turning the meeting over to Mr. Durbin. Okay. Now I just know that uh, for 2021 uh, we had budgeted $25,000 for this particular project which included some software. Um, previously Country Manor Management uh, went through each one of the departments and gave, it, gave us a summary of the framework that we have as it relates to policies and procedures as well as the status and, and the risk associated with not having those documented. Um, I was very, uh, very uh, pleased with the report that I received. Um, I was also uh, recognized the, the sense of the need to have these policies and procedures in place 
Uh, a lot of times we all have a tendency to think through, well, this is the way we've done it before, so we'll keep doing it that way. And that's not the best approach. Um, so I you know, am very supportive of going on toward the next step and utilizing uh, country management, country manner management for that. Um, so I just, comments, input, anything? I don't have anything to add. Uh, I, 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 you summed it up <laughs> very well. Okay. Very eloquent. Oh, thank you. So yes. I think that um, of this particular project, $8,000 has been spent on a lot of framework uh, for that policies and procedures, updating it to the ISO uh, 18901 uh, requirements. And so next steps would be, as Ben said, going through each area, documenting those policies and procedures, and um, you know, having that the, this is what that agreement will be for. Uh, that said, you know, I could totally uh, see that we could not spend all $25,000, but maybe created, um, you know, as it relates to this specific portion, a maximum of, you know, up to 10, I would call $10,000 uh, to engage with them for the next step. So that's just my idea. Jeff, do you have any thoughts about kind of, looks like the uh, principal consultant is $125 an hour, the associate consultant is $75, and then the editorial person is $45 per hour. So I guess I would make a motion uh, to engage the next step here uh, for uh, up to another $10,000 um, to have them uh, do the basic system functions which are included in the agreement um, as it relates to policies and procedures of the county. I'll second. Okay. I guess you, you both have to be in favor, right? Since we question. <laughs> <laughs> um, any comments or questions? Okay. Right. Motion passes. I voted yes. I'm sorry. Did I, I didn't call you out for a vote, did I? Well, I just wanted to say, I, I know I seconded the motion. I vote yes. There you go. All right. Any other comments? And then the next is the agreement with ESI for the employee P EAP program. Pam, I think you were going to speak to that. We have had ESI for our employee assistance program uh, for many years. And this is the annual renewal. The amount is $5,127.91 from March of 2021 to February of 2022. This program allows our employees to obtain counseling for any type of service, uh, pet counseling, help with finding, you know, their family members, maybe they need an assisted living and they don't know where to go. There's a whole list of, of programs that they offer to our employees free of charge. It is all confidential. And I know many employees do use it. And I think that it would be, um, to continue this program would be a good service for our employees. Right. Go I'll ahead. make a motion to approve the agreement with ESI. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion carries. And I just thought that we um, had this evaluated when we first came in, and the utilization of it is, is high, and it's a good program for the, the value of the work today. I'll turn the meeting back over to uh, Ben to finish off the new business. Okay, could I have a motion to table the award of the North and East Street Waterline Extension Projects for Columbus Township CDBG plans? I'll make a motion to table that. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion tables. Agreement with EOC to administer the rent assistance program. Um, we've made mention of this in the last meeting that we've received funding for it. Uh, we have an update now on an agreement. 
uh, between the county and the Economic Opportunity Council, which I'll ask uh, Commissioner Eggleston on a minute by Solicitor Schmidt to explain. Yes, yeah, so uh, essentially the, um, the county um, received the funds, it will provide it to EOC as it is utilized, um, with EOC administering the program and Attorney Schmidt has been good enough to put together an agreement with EOC just to kind of outline the parameters by which we will be uh, uh, engaging with them. I don't have anything further. I think it's simple that the EOC has a lot of experience in uh, administering these kind of things and uh, they, they were assisting when they, when they submitted the application to you, so. Yeah, and I, I would just add that when we did the um, CARES-related rental assistance program through DHS, or through Forest Warren Human Services, um, that was a much smaller program, and so um, it, was, it was very easy for Human Services, I think, to administer that at that time. This obviously is a much bigger program with a lot more, um, uh, you know, with a greater budget and then also a lot more opportunities. So, um, EOC has previously helped with homeless assistance programs and other things related, so they definitely have the experience in order to um, administer this. I would add that we're very grateful to EOC for their assistance and willingness to work on this because this is a huge need for the community as the um, eviction work or the eviction, and I, I don't want to say moratorium, the, 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 the moratorium. The, the eviction moratorium, as that is lifted, um, there we've, we've just had tons of discussions with folks in the community and people in human services about the fact that this this is a, 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 a crisis that's about to unfold as far as people who haven't been able to pay rent, who have lost their jobs, people who are um, in between uh, places uh, and, and rent, uh, landlords and different people who have who are in dire straits because they haven't received a rent from, from people they're associated with. So very, very excited to get this program underway and uh, again, grateful to EOC for their willingness to work with us on rolling it out. That in mind, I take a motion to approve the agreement between the county and the Economic Opportunity Council for the ERAP administration. Uh, I'll make a motion uh, to engage in the uh, agreement to administer the rental assistance program with uh, Warren Forest EOC. I'll second. Which made second in discussion. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Motion carries. Closing comments. Uh, a couple quick updates. Uh, from a CJAP perspective, um, uh, I sort of made mention of this earlier, the reason that the judge was asking to meet with us this morning was due to the state rating the AOPC funds and the negative impact that that would have on the uh, county. Uh, WCCBA, I don't have uh, any particular update. Conservation District actually just launched a new website, which I'd encourage you to check out. I think it's much clearer about what the Conservation District does. Um, the Northwest Commission, as uh, I believe everyone in this room probably knows, is administering the CHIRP uh, hospitality funds. Um, that link is online and live, taking applications. The Hog Fire Services and EMS Council, they're meeting uh, jointly, I believe tomorrow. And um, one of the items of discussion is going to be uh, the counties of Erie and Crawford are asking the DE DCED uh, for funding to do an EMS study. Um, it doesn't cost the county governments anything, as I recall. We did this with the city of Warren a couple of years ago. and. Um, Erie and Crawford have extended the offer to allow Warren County to jump in on it. Uh, I think that due to the similarity and nature of the fact that the three counties work together, uh, particularly coming from Spring Creek Fire Department where um, we're neighbors with Spartansburg and Quarry, uh, that uh, I can certainly see why working together would be a good idea. Um, so unless there's an objection from the board, um, I'd like to go ahead and commit to uh, joining in on the free study. Uh, the LEPC met and approved the uh, funding for the McCutcheon Hazmat Services, which we approved at the last commissioner's meeting. Uh, so again, that won't be coming out of the county coffers, that will be coming out of the LEPC. Uh, Penn State Extension has not met since we last met. 
Uh, crime suburbs is not met since we last met. Uh, safety and security meeting, I think it's tomorrow. It's like tomorrow afternoon. So that's an important one for us to be at. Um, if you can be, if not, please give me recommendations on how you would like to uh, spend the P Corp and P Comp money. I believe this year it would be in the ballpark of sixty thousand dollars in grants. I think thirty-five and twenty-five. Um, they have to relate to safety and security. As a consequence, I have to sign off on it and be chair of the CJAB, who I believe is the chair of Zibel. Probably the chair of Zibel. <laughs> um, I need to sign off on it. So um, those applications are getting close to due. So if you have any ideas, any of you have ideas on uh, ways we could uh, improve safety and or security um, from a liability perspective, please let me know or come to that meeting to state your positions. I think that's it for me. And I, you know, I mean, just related to that, I, 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 I just talked with Pam and Matt about trying to get some kind of ballpark figure for the sidewalks, just because uh, yes. that needs to get done. Uh, other than that, I don't, I don't think I have any kind of other update. The only comment from me would be, you know, the broadband task force um, and some uh, individuals uh, approaching the, the commissioners and looking toward the IDA to maybe put a plan together to raise some funds uh, to be able to uh, expand broadband. Uh, that seems to be taking off and uh, a lot more activity there. So spearheading that. Okay, last chance for public comments as we have a couple minutes left. Okay, now I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make that motion. One second. Thank All you. those in favor? Aye. And we are adjourned at 12 7. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, that was thanks great. for going down the gap and grabbing that for me. Yeah,